days don't really matter. I keep coming every night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, to help everybody move forward in 2019. It's awesome to see you guys. So I appreciate you guys taking time away from the game. When I just looked, it was uh, 14, 13, but I just looked in the window. My boys are in there with some friends having a good time. But I'm out here with you guys, and you are out here with me. So congratulations to both of us. Um, I appreciate you guys jumping on. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Matt Monero. Um, I come to you every night for the month of January um, in which I want to unpack some expertise, some expertise on how you can scale your business, how you can make more money, how you can help more people, and most importantly, how you can help yourselves. Um, the way I do that is by just talking perfectly honest and open with you. Um, I have started a company from zero 23 years ago in 2018. That company did $158 million. I'm the author of these two books, The Grit and You Need More Money. And I'm talking about something and you need more money, but I want to say hi to everybody. So fire up where you're from and the cities that you're from. That helps us all network because maybe you might be from uh, Indianapolis and someone else on tonight's stream is from Indianapolis. Boom, we just made a connection in Indianapolis for you guys. So tell me where everybody's from. I appreciate everybody jumping on. I want to give some shout outs here on both Instagram and on Facebook. My friend Credit Carl jumped on. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Happy New Year to you. Ames Glass just jumped on. Michael Bazo jumped on. Aaron jumped on. Sean jumped on on Facebook. Jimbo Carroll jumped on. My nephew John Ibert just jumped on. David jumped on. I appreciate all you guys. We got St. Paul, Minnesota in the house. Um, who else we got? <laughs> My buddy Luke Skanga from South Lake, Texas just jumped on. That's awesome, Lukey. Thanks for taking time away from the game to join me, Luke. We got Spokane, Washington. We got my friend David in Murfreesboro, James Springer in Nashville, Tennessee. So that's awesome. Look, I promised you guys I was going to give you the single strategy that is going to help you stack and rack cash and get your money right for 2019. And I want to get started on that here. I'm really <clears throat> fortunate. Because in my line of work, we finance truckers. Thousands and thousands of the big rigs that go up and down the road are our customers. And um, those, those customers have given me a very unique opportunity, a very unique insight in the world of business. And I see it all the time at how people... Um, might have a business if they're in business for themselves and maybe they have a personal bank account but very rarely do they ever do the proper strategy to achieve by uh this technique that i'm about to show you i need to plug in my laptop real quick okay cool Cool. <clears throat> this strategy that I'm going to give you all tonight has saved my ass so many times in my 23 year career. And it has also given me the ability to catapult and, um, and I guess in some circles get rich. So here's what I want you to do effective immediately. First thing tomorrow morning, I want you to go down to your um, accounts where you have your money and I want to make sure you do this one simple strategy. I want you to set up a second account called a reserve account at a different bank. I do not want your reserve account at the same bank. I want it at a separate bank. Now, let me get straight on this because I need people to understand this. And especially if you say to yourself, oh, Monero, I thought you were going to give a bigger nugget, man. You're just telling me to set up a savings account. No, I want you to stay with me here because I'm going to dive very, very deep with those of you who think that you are above this strategy or this strategy is too simple for you. I want you to have two accounts. One is your operating account in which the money that you earn, whether it's from your business in the form of a salary or as an employee, 
that goes into your single account, your operating account, in which all your bills get paid out of. The second account is your reserve account. It is not a savings account. And let me explain why there is a major difference between a reserve account and a savings account. Most people who set up a savings account will do it at the same institution that they have their operating account at. And what you'll end up doing is you will end up transferring money from that savings account into your operating account to cover the shortfall every month. And that's the exact reason why a savings account has to be different than a reserve account. A reserve account is your sacred stack and rack cash account. Again, I know some of you might be saying, dude, that's a pretty simple process and stay with me because I'm going to let you know a couple of things. The other thing I'm going to let you know at the end of the stream is the discount code if you want to come to my uh, conference, Business Finishing School, BFSSummit.com, if you want to learn more about that. It's in February in Dallas. And at the end of the stream, I'm going to give you a deep code, a massive code that's going to save you a lot of money. But let me stay back on point. You're going to have your operating account at one bank, and you're going to create tomorrow morning a completely separate account at a completely separate banking institution, and you're going to call it your reserve account. When you set up the reserve account, you are going to tell the bank that you do not want check writing, that you do not want a debit card, and you do not want it at the same institution as your operating account. It must be at a separate place. And for those of you who read my book, You Need More Money, I talk at length about the process that I took in setting up the reserve account many, many years ago. In a minute, I'm going to tell you how to fund it, too. The reserve account must be difficult to access. So, for example, uh, where I have my reserve account, I have them in two separate banks, totally different banks, one for my business and one for my personal my personal is at an extremely small bank that is literally only open Monday through Friday. It's open from nine to five. It's very difficult for me to get my hands on that money that's in the reserve account. You must have this stack and rack account, this cash account that is the sacred cash that is going to be used down the line not to pay for a Disney trip, not to pay for repairs on your house, not your don't tell my spouse about. It is your investment account or your save your ass account. I can tell you that in my business, we have done this for well over 15 years. I take 10% of the top line revenue, not the bottom line revenue, the top line revenue every single year, and I move it into our reserve account. That reserve account builds up over time. And because I have very specific rules of when, when I attack it, when I reach into it, and that rule is, by the way, only for investment opportunities. I never hit the reserve account for anything other than an investment opportunity. I don't hit it if there's an emergency. I, don't, I pretend I don't have it. I don't hit it if it's a vacation fund. I don't hit it if there's a, the roof needs to be fixed. None of that. That money comes out of my operating account. My reserve account is where I stack and rack cash so that I can, I can make a move when the move presents itself. So if you are like most people, the customers that I see over the years, when I get bank statements from customers, I ask them, where's the rest of the money? And they tell me, well, this is, this is where I have the money. I'm like, wait, well, no, really, where's, this, where's the rest of the money? I don't. I have one bank account. If all the money comes in and all the money goes out of one bank account, yeah. Sir, I need you to set up a reserve account, and I need you to stack and rack it with 10% of the top line revenue of your business. Now, what if you say to yourself, wait a minute, Matt, I, I, my business doesn't make 10% profit margin. How can I fund a reserve account? That's the problem. You've got to figure out how to turn that business into a greater profit machine so that you can take 10% off the top, put it into the reserve account, and you just built yourself a business that produces a minimum of a 10% profit margin, which you stack and rack in this reserve account. Now, for those of you who are saying, man, that's not very complicated, dude. That's not very sophisticated. I agree with you completely, but here's the rub. Here's what happens when you start to get a few bucks put aside in that reserve account. You start to fall in what I call false positive. It's when you start to think you're actually doing better than you really are. 
you start to say to yourself, well, wait a minute, I've got my operating account that covers the majority of our bills, and I got five grand stacked and racked in my reserve account, and you begin to play that game, that false positive game on yourself, that you actually have enough money stacked and racked very, very dangerous when you fall in false positive. And the reason I'm bringing this concept to you tonight is because I know some people, number one, are still living out of one account. All your money's going into one, all your money's coming out, and you're hoping and praying that there's something left over at the end. Terrible investment strategy to get rich. There are also some of you who have a savings account and you're funneling a little bit of money into that. But guess what? It's at your same institution, and at your same banking institution, you're able to transfer money back and forth right on your phone. Way too easy. And there are some of you who actually do have a reserve account, a stack and rack account, and you're starting to fall into false positive. You're starting to think that you're doing better than you really are. And that's the wake up call on tonight's stream. I can promise you that I would have been bankrupt multiple times if I did not have the reserve account. I have had to use that reserve account at unique times when an opportunity presented itself for me to go ahead and jump into the deal. And I've also at certain times at the bare bones bottom when I was busted out and I've been busted out a few times in my career, I had to tap into that and it saved the business. Okay. I had to do that. Um, so that's the primary takeaway. Now I'm going to give you some real life numbers for those of you. Some are think this numbers are too low and some of you are going to be like, oh my God, I can never do it. Until you get $50,000 in that reserve account, you shouldn't spend a dime. You should be stacking and racking all your money. You should be funneling as much possible money as you can into that stack and rack account. And don't make investments until you have $100,000. All of it lives here in the you need more money book. So I want to go ahead and uh, take some questions from you guys. Um, I do have one here on Instagram that's interesting. Chris Clan says, my uncle says not to trust you and that it's a pyramid scheme. I don't believe that. Why do people say stuff like that? I don't know, dude. You got to uh, you got to make up your own mind on that one, my friend. I wouldn't have any idea. I have nothing to sell to you other than a book and a conference. So um, you'll have to uh, talk to your uncle about that. There's no pyramid scheme going on. I love that one. Let's move to questions. Detailed questions about the stack and rack account, the reserve account, the operating account, how you make money that's on your mind. I want to remind everybody to please share the video. Please like it. Go to mattmonero.com on social and follow me. Those things mean a lot to me. I want to get my audience larger so I can help more people. Um, and uh, when you help me with that, I'm extremely grateful for that. I also want to remind you, go to bfssummit.com if you're interested in coming to my conference in February in Dallas, bfssummit.com. And I'm going to give you the code, type in MATT400, and you will get $400 off your admission to the event tonight. Unbelievable discount. Uh, not quite as good as last night because I had that one expire last night. But type in MATT400 in the BFS Summit. Uh, at bfssummit.com and I'll get you there. So let's take some questions. I'm going to Facebook real quick. Awesome. Alan, very nice to see you. Morgan jumped on. Will jumped on. Aaron jumped on. Matt ain't no salesperson. I appreciate that, Aaron. I do get such a kick out of that. It's a pyramid scheme. I don't even know what that means. I have no idea what I'm doing to sell a pyramid scheme. I love that. If anybody's got any questions about this, uh, Arthur jumped on and said he got my book. I appreciate that very much, Arthur. Here's the book he's talking about. You Need More Money. It's available on Amazon. My other book, my first book, my self-published book is called The Grit. You pick them both up. They're both great books, quick, easy reads. Um, let's see what we got here from uh, Kyle Evans says, I've hit a plateau in my business and looking to get out of a rut and generate new ideas and get money flowing again. Any tips to break the rut? Dude, there is a process to break the rut. It does happen. I will give you a tip. Go to uh, cffnationwide.com. That's my company's website. Click Get Free Stuff and download the booklet, uh, Nine Tips to Get uh, uh, Focused, Refocused, and Unstuck. It's yours free of charge. So you can go there. Listen, you've got to take more action. You've got to dream bigger. If you're at a plateau in your business, it's probably because you just use grit, 
Kyle, you just use grit and energy to get your business to a certain point. Now it's time to start putting in structure. That structure lives at business finishing school. Uh, and you will get a deep dive into it if you come to our event in Dallas, Texas. I would highly suggest you spend 299 bucks and get yourself immersed into our business finishing school community. It's a great question. I understand how it feels to be stuck, but stuck happens uh, throughout the process. The key is not to get stuck for too long. If you're going to rise, get stuck, rise, get stuck, rise, get stuck. And as I talk about in the book, sometimes, my friend, you got to take a step backwards to take two steps forwards. What I mean by that is you may literally have to take a pay cut to hire more highly qualified staff to be able to move to the next jump in your career and in your business. So do not be afraid, my friend, to take a step back to be able to take two steps forward. I've had to do it multiple times in my career. There have been multiple times in my career where people within my organization have been making more money than me, but because I had the focus, I had the vision, I had the belief that I would not fail, I was perfectly comfortable in taking a short-term pay cut to be able to fuel that. Um, Mike Vaccaro says, if you hit the $100,000 mark, can you invest that in your own business for growth? Dude, great question. You do not have to invest outside of your business. In fact, if you run a business that makes a 20% profit margin, you should be funneling a lot more of your money into that business versus putting your money into something else that might make four or five or 6%. So do not be afraid to continue to fund your business if you have a profit margin that allows you to make more money in your business than outside of your business. I challenge everyone on the thing here, on the stream here tonight, if you are in business for yourself and you are operating a business less than the 10% margin, therefore you cannot fund the reserve account, you've got a problem in your business. You've got to fix that problem in your business before you worry about anything else. Your business must be able to fund the reserve account. And that's the message for tonight. How are you going to get your money right in 2019? And, the, and tonight's message, simple for some, especially for those who say, Monero, it's pretty straightforward, dude. I have my operating account and I have this reserve account. My challenge is most people do not have two accounts. They have one account. All the money goes into one account. It funnels down through the expenses and they keep their fingers crossed that they have a little bit left over. Some people will go a step further and have a savings account. Again, it sounds simple, but I'm telling you guys, I have looked at tens of thousands of credit applications and bank statements for customers and most of them are operating off of one account one operating account money goes in the top expenses come out and they keep their fingers crossed some people will have a savings account but that savings account is touchable it's usually at the same institution as your operating account and i tell you do not do that your reserve account must be at a separate institution completely separate from your operating account. You must have no check writing capabilities. It must have no debit card capabilities and it must be a bitch to get to. It's such a pain in the ass for me to get my money out of my reserve account. Now I, I got to go to the bank. I can't write a check for it. I have no debit card. Basically I got to park my car, go into the bank and literally meet with the teller and make a withdrawal during their hours, which are nine to five Monday through Friday. It's a pain in my ass to get my money out just the way I like it and just the way you need it. And for those of you who already have the operating account and the savings account and reserve account and you're saying, boy, it's pretty rudimentary, Monero, let me ask you this. I bet you're in false positive. I bet you think you're doing better than you are. You got five grand, 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand in that account. I'll tell you something that I've heard in Texas. I have a friend who says this. And I love when he says this to me. I think it's so funny. We might be out someplace and he'll tap me on the shoulder. He'll, he'll say, hey, check out that guy. You think that guy can write a check for 25,000? I love when he tells me that. He says, you think that guy can write a check for 25,000? Ask yourself, man. Do you think most of the people you hang out with can write a check for 25 grand? That's false positive, my friend. You got 10 grand, 10, 15 grand, 20 grand sacked away in your stack and rack your reserve account. It ain't anywhere near enough. You need a minimum of 50 G's in your, in your reserve account before you even remotely think of doing any investing, 
any real spending, any vacations, anything along those lines. And if you get my book, in it I tell the story of how I remember how my wife and I, the rocker, we had $10,000 in that reserve account. And I remember calling her in and saying, can you believe it? We got $10,000. It was like all the money in the world that we had squirreled and scrimped and saved and pinched off $10,000. And if you get the book, you'll realize the, the scale that has occurred since then. That book is available on Amazon. Here's what it looks like. You need more money on Amazon. So questions from anybody? I'm going back to uh, Facebook. Um, my friend Will Murphy says, what are some investments short-term that you like? I really don't like short-term investments. I, if I'm doing short-term stuff, I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in my business, and I'm putting the money into a money market account. I want to, I, when I put my money away, I never think about taking it back. It is a long-term play. When I allocate capital into an investment, whether it's real estate, whether it's private equity deals that I've done, whether it's angel investing, whatever that is, I never worry about getting it back. It's gone, it's invested, and I only want to see it multiply, 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 multiply. I never worry about how does it come back to me because then I'm doing the wrong deal. By the way, if you get the book, You Need More Money, I talk at length about the risk versus reward analysis, and you've got to really figure out what your risk tolerance is. Will, it's a great question, but I never look to deploy capital in a short-term fashion. I look to save or reinvest in my business, but if I'm looking for a short-term play, I put it back into my business or I put it into a money market account. Let's keep going on questions because the questions are really good tonight. I want to thank everybody who keeps jumping on. Casey Dyer just jumped on. Blake Duncan, Laura Bremlett just jumped on. I hate to be looking over here, guys, but my laptop had to get plugged in. Walter Scott just jumped on. Awesome. Uh, Morgan from Business Finishing School has dropped in the link, you guys. Anyone can feel free to DM us at Business Growth Summit. We'll give you any more details on the summit. The discount code for tonight is MATT, capital letters, 400. Go to bfssummit.com. Register for the event. You'll get 400 bucks off tonight. Thank you all for the shares and for the likes tonight. Let's see what we have. How do you escape from buying nice things when everyone else is for status, even if you have the cash? I love it. Talk about it in the book. you got to put yourself into accumulation mode, my friend. It's when you start, when you start to say, I'm no longer going to spend cash that I don't have. I'm in accumulation mode. And your friends will say, what the heck are you talking about? And you say, dude, I'm stacking and racking cash. In my book, I talk about, I remember the night that I went out to dinner with our friends. And um, I, it's a long story. You can read about it and you need more money. But I basically used my last $500 on a credit card to try to impress my friends. And the next time they asked us, I said, I'm not going. And they said, why, dude? Wasn't it fun? Don't you like hanging out? So I love hanging out with you guys. But I'm in accumulation mode. What's accumulation mode, my buddy said? I said, I'm stacking and racking cash, baby. I'm no longer pissing away money that I don't have. I'm stacking and racking cash. And I said, we'd love to go to dinner with you, but we're going for tacos. And I remember we went to this taco place. We had a great time. And after the meal, he came up to me. He said, man, I'm so glad we didn't go to Bob's Chop House because I didn't have the money to keep going there either. I promise you, man, tell your friends you're in stack and rack mode, you're in accumulation mode, and they will breathe a sigh of relief. Thanks for all the hearts on Instagram, I love them. I appreciate those. Jimbo Carroll says, my business is about 90% profit, if not more, what would you invest in coming off the best year? Jimbo, I don't know how you have a 90% profit margin business, I don't get that. Um, I don't know how that works. You might want to expand to the group and tell us how that's possible because we should all be in that business. A 90% profit margin? Help me understand that. I mean, I know you're in the contracting business, and I don't know many people in the contracting business with that, but, um, but let me know. Um, Mike Ficara just popped up on Facebook and said, Ally, I think what you're referencing there, Mike, is an, as an online account, to have Ally as your online account. I think that's what you're referencing there, and I absolutely love um, online bank accounts for your reserve account. It's one more layer of difficulty to get your money back. It'll take you, even if you want to transfer that money out, it'll take you 24 to 48 hours to get that money. 
and during that time you might actually say to yourself, man, do I really want to do this? Is that really the allocation of capital they want to do? Do I really want to hit that reserve account? So I like that, Mike. That's a really, really good suggestion. Thank you for that. Um, I'm back on um, I'm back on Facebook here just for a second. Uh, my friend Rico says, uh, this is the best advice you gave me. Learn how to say no. That's the accumulation mode concept. I love it. Welcome, Bob. Welcome, Michael, on Facebook. Let's go to Instagram real quick. If you guys have any specific questions, if anybody tells me that you think my ideal is simple, my idea is simple tonight, I'm, I would love to hear from you. Tell me how many people have this reserve account that I'm talking about. Just drop in the comments and tell me I have a reserve account because I would really like to test my theory here on how few people actually have a reserve account. I'm not talking about a savings account and I'm certainly not talking about an operating account. I'm talking about the reserve account where you have literally earmarked only stack and rack cash, not a secret stash, not an easy to get to stash. Let me know that because that stack and rack account that reserve account has saved my ass and it will save yours and it will open up incredible opportunities when those deals come along, when you do what I tell you in my book on how to get your network up. How do you connect with people that bring you deals? It's all in the book available on Amazon. You need more money. Um, if the questions are starting to die, I'm grateful for everyone taking the time to jump on. Maybe people want to get back to the game. I just wanted to feed into you a little very common sense strategy that I have used so well to accumulate cash, to deploy when the right opportunity comes along and allow that money to compound and build over time. So uh, Josh Aubrey says, my reserve is real estate sucked at savings, so had to dump the money someplace. Got it, sounds great. The only question there, my friend, is what is the goose that lays the golden egg to continue to fund the reserve account? That's the key. It's not good enough to just deploy one time, and I'm not saying this is what you've done, my friend, but once we get that reserve account set and then we deploy, we've got to get the goose that lays the golden egg to keep funding that reserve account. Um, because even on my real estate deals, you know, the allocation of, of the capital to the cash flow, it's never enough to refund the reserve account. You've got to have a goose that lays the golden egg, a business, an income opportunity, a great career that feeds the reserve account. Um, so again, I'm grateful for everybody. Um, okay, Jimbo says, I run mobile roof repair business, low, low overhead, and I don't have to advertise. So that's good for you, man. I know there's a lot of money in roofing. I love that. Uh, Will Murphy says he's got one. Congratulations, Will Murphy. Rico is going to be at the uh, ten, at the um, business finishing school. Um, Will Murphy wants to know, is it Clemson or Bama? Two of my boys, me and my, one of my boys are on Bama. My other two boys are on Clemson. The loser swims in the pool, which is about 49 degrees, even though it's a gorgeous night tonight. So um, Walter Scott says he has a reserve account. Congratulations. Justin Wood says he has a reserve account. He's building it up. Congratulations. Um, so that's it guys. Again, the code, if you want to come to my event in February, myself, my partner, Rick Sapio, Tim story is keynoting at it. Elena Cardone is keynoting at it. A few speakers that no one really knows or has heard of, but I wouldn't have them at the event unless they're incredible. Rand Stegen, Dr. Ivan Meisner, uh, Dustin Barton, Jim Shields. You want to talk about family balance and keeping it all together. He is incredible. Um, you're going to want to be there, guys. I'm telling you, it's two and a half days in Dallas, Texas, 22, 23, 24. Go to BFS Summit. Put in my code, put in my code, MATT, all caps, 400, and you'll save 400 bucks. Uh, Ryan wants to know, how did you and the Rock, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, my wife's name is Rocky, R-O-K-K-I, -K -K call her the Rocker. How did you guys get on the same page when you went into rack and stack mode? So, I have to tell you, the rocker, she liked the sound of accumulation mode. She understood what that meant when I laid that down and said, here's where we are. We're no longer pissing away money that we don't have to impress people. We are.
are in accumulation mode. And I remember asking me, what, 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 what was accumulation mode? That mean? I said, we're stacking and racking cash. I'm making you secure. Listen, listen. For the women on the stream, please take no offense on this because maybe some of the women on the stream are the income earners. But I believe women want their man to provide them with security. I can tell you that's what my wife, the rocker, wants. She wants to know that there will always be a roof over our heads, there will always be food in the refrigerator, there will always be her clothes in the closet, and there will always be more cash coming in. And when I position that security as accumulation mode, honey, I need a little bit of time to stack and rack cash so that I can deploy that cash so I can make additional income for security for you. She was on board just like that. So that's how you want to present how you get your spouse on board. Uh, Chris wants to know, what's the biggest mistake you made starting in your business in the first few years? Dude, I was terrified to talk to other people um, and ask for help. I was all alone on my own island as a business owner. I had no network. I had no friends. I had no mentor. It was a massive mistake. What I should have done was work the network like I work it now with full and total transparency. I'm just getting going, guys. I really don't know what the hell I'm doing. Who wants to help me? Can you give me some advice? Instead, I just I just was like a squirrel hoarding my nuts. And what I mean by that is I didn't even have money to hold on to. I just had potential to hold on to and I didn't want to share it with anybody. It was a massive, massive mistake. I would also go and, and challenge you to get this book. I talk about that process a lot in the book, You Need More Money, available on Amazon. All right, guys. It's going to be Bama tonight. Anybody want to fire up the score and let me know what the score of the game is right now? <laughs> Morgan from Business Finishing School went to Auburn. She's not for Alabama at all. That's awesome. What an unbelievable um, rivalry that Alabama and Auburn is, man. That's incredible. They absolutely hate each other. So, um, again, Morgan, thanks for jumping in and firing up the commentary for everybody from Business Growth Summit, bfssummit.com. Drop in Matt 400. That gets you an incredible discount, gets you the event. Get the book, You Need More Money. Do me a big favor. Keep the likes, keep the shares, keep the comments. Tell your friends about my content. I like to look at myself as a very blue-collar, straight shooter. Um, I'm not interested in private jets. I'm not interested in that lifestyle. I'm interested in preserving my my income and generating more for my employees, for my vendors, for guys like this one right here, this little guy right here, the juicer. I want to keep this guy for a long time. This guy, this guy loves it. I want to be around for him. And I can tell you all, you want to put yourself in a position where you've stacked and racked enough cash to be able to do really cool things with these kids because time goes like that. One day they're little, the next day they're big, and you say to yourself, man, could I get that time back? And the answer is you can't. You cannot get time with these guys back. So have the cash to do cool things. Get the whole thing spinning. I'm not saying have the cash in my reserve account and spend it so that I can create memories at Disney World. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about setting up the whole game plan, the business, the employee base, the vendors, the clients, the goose that lays the golden egg, and we keep feeding it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. We don't want to be shortchanged in any area of it. But to do that, you're going to have to sacrifice. And most people won't sacrifice. But if you're on the streams with me for the month of January, you know what I'm talking about. You're willing to do some sacrificing. And I love that because I will feed into people who are not afraid to do some sacrificing. All right. Okay, guys. Morgan says, the juicer. All right, guys, thanks for everybody jumping on. I appreciate you all very much. I love you. Be safe. Have great nights. And um, what's the score in there, Homer? It is 27 to, I think, 14. Who? Clemson. Ooh. You're going to jump in the pool, baby. Ooh. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Thank you for your time, guys. Take care. Bye.